Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. It's Thursday, March 23rd, and uh, here in the New York metropolitan area, Long Island, about 37 degrees, cool, sunny, but uh, a very exciting day for me. A very exciting day. I've got a, a special guest here in the studio. My special featured guest today is the entrepreneur and visionary, the founder of Mother's Art World, Seema Levy. Mother's Art World teaches art history through its creative book series, original songs, and accompanying teacher's curriculum. Wow. Welcome to the Dean Blackman Thank Show, Seema Levy. Thank you so Levy. much. I'm very, very happy to be here long awaits but we're here and i'm for sure seeing a great show you bet <laughs> you bet we've uh first of all i want to say hello to all our live facebook uh, listeners we're getting new experience doing this at the same time we had to wait for dean's intro to come on and for me to welcome because this show will also seema's show will be up tomorrow It'll be up, podcasted, uh, and archived on the Dean Blackman Show YouTube channel, as well as uh, it could be downloaded on iTunes. But, uh, you know, once again, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having uh, me. That was a, a really cool thing you did on Facebook with saying that you're on the way to Sotokit or Sotokit. or <laughs> You were so cute and adorable. It, it was thank really. You. Uh, it was never ending. <laughs> but a beautiful neighborhood. Okay. A gorgeous neighborhood. Okay. I just want to say that, uh, first of all, have you ever been out this way? No. N never been out never. this way? Never. Never. Wow. How about the Hamptons? Yes. That you've been to, yes. right? Wow. <laughs> well, listen, it was probably what, about a, a month ago, maybe a little bit more than a month, that uh, you and I, I connected with you. I saw this lovely woman, Seema Levy, and uh, I saw you on Instagram. Yes. And I said, not only are you stunning and beautiful, but, uh, and obviously I learned inside the heart just how beautiful you are as time's gone on and now i want to tell everybody around the world being on my show about you but uh i'll never forget approaching your home and uh once we entered uh just seeing everything that was taking place you were smart i just want to say she kicked all the guys out of the out of the house when, yeah, sharon, me when out. sharon and i arrived <laughs> the the guys were kicked out of the house and i think it was your daughter paris yes your lovely mother yes and i'll never forget your be Mom, beautiful Jewish mother, yes. your beautiful Jewish mother, not for the entire hour that we were there, she would not take her eyes Aww. off her, her beautiful daughter. And so, she called us right before uh, the show. So I just want to call out to Seema's mom. Shout I love out. you. It's, Shout it's, out, it's, mommy. It's early yet for Passover, but happy <laughs> happy Pesach. You got a beautiful family and, Thank uh, you. and, uh, and, and a beautiful daughter. And, uh, and I'm very happy to, to, to hear to talk about you your career mother's uh, uh art world and why don't we why don't we get started sure okay so um you know as sharon and i met you that day uh and and in the weeks that followed i saw continued um seema levy uh boundless energy inspiring enthusiasm for teaching children uh all about art in a way that not only creates new artists, but also supports the de development of their mind and their imagination. That's right. So I want to go back in time because we chatted a little bit when we first met. Let's go back when you were a youngster and, uh, you know, you grew up in Tel Aviv, Israel. Yes. And you didn't come over to New York until uh, you were eight, eight years, years old. old. And uh, a lot of events. Mm -hmm. at that time touched your life and made a tremendous impact on you mm -hmm. why don't you share with the audience uh wow, we're getting growing deep right growing, away. <laughs> growing up in israel it's a it's a fascinating story and it's, a, and it's a lot about you 
So I created Mother's Art World because of my childhood. I had a beautiful and amazing fun childhood, although there was a low point in it. Um, my brother, when he was 17 years old, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He fought for his life for a year, but lost his life at 18 years old. I turned into writing and um, a little of ceramic work um, just to cope. I wasn't able to do much with children because I was a child myself. I was only eight years old. I moved from Tel Aviv, Israel, eight, not for the American dream per se, but in search for light. Uh, my family was down. We were rocked. And we were searching for happiness. We found it in America. It took time. Um, but together as a family unit, we made it a vow and a promise to each other that we're going to get through together as a unit. Uh, years later, I began to study art history. It happened to be at Schechter School of Long Island where uh, they had a Learning to Look program. And from there, I pursued it even further. I now run an art appreciation class at Cohen's Medical Center. And um, we meet every week. We learn all about the artist. We analyze the art. I read my stories to them. And my classes actually be, um, f gets filmed and broadcasted throughout the hospital on the Me TV at Cohen's Medical Center. Um, so you see, I, we took something that was negative and turned it into positive. And that's my message out there. Like you said, Dean, my mom was sitting watching me the whole time for the hour that you were with me. Didn't take your eyes. Didn't take the eyes. She didn't take her eyes off no, her daughter. Not for a right. minute. That's right. That's right. And she's instilled that in me. And hopefully I can instill that in the world. If your daughter, your son, or anyone has a dream, allow them to follow it no matter what it is. If it's an art, if it's in music, if it's an you know, attorney, I don't know about the garbage man, but uh, like anything, even the garbage man, whatever is, whatever they wishes, you know, I have a nephew, you know, and his name is Jimmy Levy, and he's a phenomenal, phenomenal musician. He took a year off of school, not going to college to pursue his music. Now, I probably won't allow that, but now that I think about it, maybe I would, because that's his dream. He's going to go back to school. He's going to follow his music. Follow your dreams, people. Life is too short. Life is way too short. My brother, Donnie, who passed away of a brain tumor, also had a dream to become his writer. He did. He was the youngest junior editor for an Israeli newspaper called Yediot Acharonot. He had his own column, and he was a high school student. So he did get to pursue a little bit of his dream. You know, who would have known what would have became of him? But he did what he wanted. For a I'm, short period I'm of time. I'm sure your brother was a terrific young man. Yeah. Okay. A great young man. Yeah. You know, on a lighter note, uh, one thing that I did forget to mention when we came to your house, your lovely daughter, Paris. Yes. Hello. Hello, Hi, Paris. Paris. If you're if You better you're not watching, be watching because you're in school. I'll, <laughs> I'll, never, I'll, never, I'll never forget. I'll never forget uh, when uh, you and I first met. It took about a half hour. My wife, Sharon, was picking on me because I was. it took me time to pronounce your first name correctly. Yes. And I'll never forget <laughs> how many times you were you were mentioning Blackman, Blockman, Blitchman, Blackman. You were pronouncing it wrong. Your name is wrong. harder. And I'll never forget. Blackman. Blackman. <laughs> just like Satake. I'll never forget that your lovely daughter, Paris, yelling out, Mom, it's Mr. Blackman. <laughs> so... Uh, how many languages do you speak, Paris? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, two. She speaks two. <laughs> and but by, I speak four. And by the way, you mentioned about uh, being a garbage man. Yeah. It just so happens that the timing tomorrow, I'm having a lovely woman, another lovely woman on. Uh, uh, Carol garbage Ruth, woman? Carol Ruth Weber. Oh. She's a lifestyle influencer. She's a very big writer. And she's going to be live also in the studio oh, here great. tomorrow. But it just so happens she's going to talk a lot about, about what it's like being married to a garbage man. Is her, she really her, married her, to a her, garbage her, man? Her, her, her husband is a garbage man. Honestly, so I tomorrow, do. Wait, tomorrow, it's going to be. This is one of I many have to stories. Stop here because that Carol, I have a sixth sense. 
And I go, don't, go I ahead. say things, and usually there's a reason for it. Black man, look. Black garbage man, man uh, black man, and the garbage man's wife is going to be here tomorrow. You were calling me Bletch, <laughs> Bletchman, Blockman, Blitchman, and I was calling you Sima, Sima, Sima. Sima and Sima. Sharon kept correcting me at Sima. Sima. Okay. Like Gina. So let's let's move on a little bit more. Uh, mother's art world. I mean, really, it's open ended, and I know I've got a host of questions, but my first question is pretty much open ended is what does Seema Levy do and what is Mother's Art World and get into a little bit more. What is the Mother's Art World Meet the Artist series? Okay. So what does Seema Levy do? I'm, I'm an author, I'm a writer, but I'm also a teacher. Um, I love children, but I also love art. And my background was in fashion. I worked for Bergdorf Goodman. I traveled, I've seen a lot of fashion, which led me to a lot of museums. My love of art um, came from my childhood, but was enhanced in my 20s. Mother's Art World series is really a fun series because there are five, there are a total of six characters, but there are five students. Justine Paris, named after my daughter Paris, but also because it used to be the art capital of the world. Today, New York is also a capital. Um, and a lot of amazing cities. So there's Justine Paris, um, there's Maze, and there is um, Mon Monet. And these characters travel in time through a magical word, wackadooey. So if you say three times, wackadooey, 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 you get to travel and uh, to the land of artists. The land of artists, you meet the artist of choice. So in a, a visit with Vincent Van Gogh, you meet wow. Van Gogh, wow. and he teaches you all about his life, his genre. You get to view his paintings. I actually purchased um, the painting from the Bridgman Museum. You're not allowed to use any artist's painting unless it's purchased by the museum. Wow. Mine comes from the Bridgman Museum of Art in New York City. Um, and the kids get to learn so much, yet it's fun. It's a fun aspect. They travel, they learning, and they also solve a little dilemma that they have. There's a dilemma. Maze doesn't have patience. He doesn't know what to do. Should he write first? Should he paint first? And you know, the artist also teaches them a facts of life. Wow, that's yeah. pretty inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> Very inspiring. I gotta ask you. I mean, how did you wake up one day and decide that you want to be an author? Okay. Um, like I said, in my childhood, I used to write a lot just to cope. So I had many diaries. My diaries were pretty, pretty funny. Um, but I love volunteering. So I began to volunteer at Cohen's Medical Center. And I would write a curriculum or a lesson plan for each class. Through my lesson plans, I realized that I, I've accumulated a lot of lessons. And... I was constantly praised by the way I, I taught in the, um, at Cohen's because I wasn't intimidating to the children. I also played games with them just to view art, whether it's I spy or, you know, finding the elements through shapes or anything like that. Um, it wasn't intimidating. It was interactive. So I thought just looking at my plans one day, what if I just turn these into books? And so I did. Wow, that's a great story. <laughs> and why and why is why was and why is art so important to you? Well, there's so many different reasons why art is so important. I mean, art is everywhere. We don't realize that it's everywhere, but it's everywhere. You go to a plastic surgeon's office and there's art. You go to Dean Blacksman's office, there's art. <laughs> Bletchman, Blackman. <laughs> <laughs> <There's, laughs> you are so funny. I mean, there's, art is literally everywhere. But art used to be for the people that could only afford art. Think about it, art history. Who got to get their portraits painted? Kings and queens, presidents. George Washington had his own artists follow him in battle. So it's these are the people that used to get painted. Today... It's easier. Wow. And we get to learn about the past, whether it's biblical scenes, um, you know, in the Sistine Chapel or 
um, you know, uh, things from the Greek mythology, you get to learn from art. I was always intrigued by it. History, I'm a history buff. I love history. Um, and yeah, and art and fashion goes hand in hand. I'm definitely a fashionista. And I just love it. I do. Wow. It's my passion. Who's your favorite artist and why? I have to say it's Monet. And I tell you why. Uh, I love his art. That's, you know, obvious reasons. But also, it's because he broke the rules. He broke every rule and made it happen for himself. So there was a, st um, a salon in Paris. Think about it like um, the X Factor or The Voice, where artists used to go in to the salon and you know, show their showcase their art. And there were judges sitting across um, just viewing the art and they can reject you or accept you. Monet's art was rejected. Not only was rejected, his impression Sunrise got its name because one of the critics looked, viewed his art and said, this is not art. This is an impression of art. It's not even finished. Uh, and Mr. Monet <laughs> thought to himself, this is absolutely art. Art doesn't have to look real to be good. So therefore, I'm going to create my own salon and I don't need your salon. So what he did is he created the Salon of Refusé, which means the Salon de Refusé, which is the Salon of the Refused. And guess who made the money? Mr. Monet. He recruited artists such as, um, um, well, Van Gogh came later, but Bastille, uh, Surratt, um, many, many artists, the Degas, and together they they showcased in this Salon de Refusé and made a lot of money and broke ways to modern art. I mean, they took something that were impossible, broke rules, and started a whole new era. One of, that's amazing. One of my favorites is Van Gogh. Ooh. How did you feel about Van Gogh? Van Gogh is definitely passionate, and I he's one of my favorite as well. Um, he had a lot of problems. However, he was the fastest, fastest painter. So he was able to paint a full painting in one hour. As a matter of fact, his last painting, The Irises, was painted the day before he killed himself at the hospital. Um, the irises used to grow in the back of, in the, in the gardens of the hospital. And it took him one hour. That's how fast he was. Because he was very radical. And the way he painted with the thick brush stroke, strokes and paint, um, you know, a lot of people copied, mm. such as uh, Picasso. Picasso followed a whole new era that came from Van Gogh, if he only knew. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. amazing. You know, what's, uh, what's incredible about you when I, when I see you day to day and, and just when we interact and we speak uh, and everything that's going on in your world, I mean, being a mom, a wife, uh, author, mm -hmm. uh, teacher, uh, writer, creator, I mean, it's amazing. You've got a beautiful family. Thank you. Uh, your husband, Jason, uh, your children, Jordan, Logan, and Paris. Beautiful, beautiful kids. Thank you. I mean, I've got to ask you, how do you keep it going? How how do you juggle everything? And how do you, uh, uh, you know, how do you prevent, how do you prevent burnout? So I have to plug my friend Stacy Peskin right now. I'm always going to be 10 minutes late because what Mr. Blickman said. <laughs> I'm always late. I'm always in trouble with Miss Peskin. Is she your fitness? She's, uh, no, she's not Kristen. She's, no, is she your fitness? Uh, she's very much into fitness. She, no, but is that your trainer? Oh, no, she's my best friend. Oh, she's your best friend. I thought if it, I thought if it was going to be your trainer, I was going to say that she no, has to... Uh, she's my best she has friend. To, she has to train me uh, before... Or at least Sandler is also for, my best friend. Forgetting. But she, she gives me... She knows that I'm late. She's fine with it. <laughs> but between Facebook Live, uh, she's going to get a hell of a plug uh, on Facebook Live and, and on the podcast versions oh, of yeah. the show. So, she's uh, the greatest girl, but she... Cut me some slack, girl. <laughs> okay. So how do you? So how do you? How do you? How do you? Juggle, how do I juggle? How do you juggle this great family and your, so your aside career? From and being ten minutes late to everything, including your show. <laughs> I think you were. I think you. <laughs> I think, I think you were, I, I got to tell everybody and it's going to be on the podcast 10 minutes late. You were two, two hours late. No, 20 minutes late, but I made it. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you pronounce the target? 
Satake. Satake. S E S E T A U K E T. Satake. Satake. Dean Blackman show. <laughs> and for everybody around the world, and for everybody that's listening and never heard of Satake, we are about sixty-five <laughs> miles from Manhattan on the north shore of Long Island. Most people, when you say Satake, never heard of it, and we have to say, you know, Old Field, Port Jefferson, Stony Brook, Brook Poquot. Uh, you know, where the ferries go over to a I recognize the hamlet. Bridgeport. I passed by another hamlet. Good. Um, how do I juggle? How I, do you juggle your, your, your entire life? I really do have a schedule, though I'm very late. I, I do have a schedule. So, and I also like to pamper myself. I have to have one girl's lunch a week. I have to. It's good for the brain. I have to teach at least twice a week. I have to write every day. And that's usually done in the morning. So when my kids get on the bus at 7 a.m., I do my blog. Then I go to Soul Cycle. Then I come home and I write some more. And then I just dream because I have big dreams in my head. My dreams are creating products next. I already have T-shirts, backpacks, blankets, and pillows that you that has um, paintings of actual paintings that kids can color in. And I would like to take it to the next step. Beautiful. And then I meet a friend for an hour before my kids get home. And then it's dance. And then it's soccer. <laughs> and then mommy, help me with my homework. And then the husband comes home and he wants a home-cooked meal every day, which I have to cook. But not on uh, Mondays. Definitely so not. How often do you cook? Five times a week. No kidding. No. Really? I don't cook. No, wait. I am no, shocked. No, no, four times a week. Sorry, four times. Four times a week. Yes, you're, I don't cook you're sure, on you're sure Saturday that, night. You sure that number is not really one day a week? No, I promise you I'm not one of those girls that makes reservations all the time. <laughs> but I, no, yeah, four times a week. Okay. I will never cook on a Saturday night, nor a Sunday, and definitely not Monday. Because when you look at uh, Seema Levy and Mother's uh, Art World, when you look at her beautiful pictures on uh, Instagram and Facebook, it looks like you have um, <laughs> a very, very, very big social life. I have a colorful life. A colorful life. Okay. Colorful life. Okay. It's, it's, um, I'm one of these people that believe in friendships. I love my friends. I do. I love and adore you. Um, and I think that friends are good friends, I should say. Not the not the bad ones. You skim them out. But good friends. And when you when you find good friendships, there's nothing you can you can't overcome. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So other than what you shared about growing up in Tel Aviv and the personal things that impacted your life where you are today, is there anything else that you wanna say that uh has are there any events that have inspired you to do what you do today? Any events? Um, I don't, not events per se. I just believe in doing. I'm a doer. I don't, you know, I feel a lot of times from my past, dreaming got me through tough times. Um, and like I said, writing. But if you're just going to dream and not do what you're dreaming about, then it's just wasted dreams. Right. So I believe in making your dreams become a reality. Excellent. Yeah, I do. Wow. That and must be that must be great advice that you pass on to your children. I should hope so. Good. Yeah. How about Jason? Do you pass that on to him? Yeah, he's more of a doer, not a dreamer. So, but he has me to help him dream more. Um, you know, he he sets goals for himself. I'm more of the dreamer. Like I want to see a huge rainbow at the end of the tunnel but it's going to happen beautiful <laughs> and you know i'm sure it's going to happen it's definitely going to happen to you there's no doubt about it thank you okay and i want to continue through my platform and my shows and even do some dean on the streets with you yes i want to continue to get seema levy and mother's art world and everything that you have planned i'm your biggest fan and advocate thank you. and i want to continue even after this show to continue to get your message and your word out and done your, and thank your dream you. i'm all i'm on board with you i appreciate it okay thank you so much so uh you know speaking about your lovely family uh it's my understanding and what i in our discussions that uh that your family also played uh, a significant role in a lot of what's 
yeah. of, of where things are at today with uh, Mother's Art World. Oh, they absolutely do. Um, it's actually my kids who inspire me and some of my kids' friends. I Each one of my characters are portrayed after m one of my kids and the other two are portrayed after my daughter's best friends. And because one character is spicy and one character is a dreamer, one character is a whiner, but, and that's how they inspire me because I like to watch. And, you know, they say that you learn a lot from the mouth of babes or just by watching them. And it's the absolute truth. If you only listen to children, you will get to learn so much. Like we get so upset and we get so hurt about uh, things where children, a lot of times, like it just goes over the head. And I, I try to listen and look out for that. Wow. So it, it must be unbelievable that uh, besides your creative work and your products and your art, I mean, everything uh, that you say about children, mm -hmm. you obviously have to have this love for children. Oh, yeah. Because it, it, just, it, just, it just wouldn't work. Yes, it wouldn't work. It absolutely not work. Um, you know, I have to share one story with you. There was one last... It was, I think it was about, yeah, maybe six or seven months ago. It was raining, pouring, um, and I didn't feel like going to the hospital. I had one of those selfish moments, and I didn't feel like going to the hospital to teach, but I would never just call in and say I'm not feeling well if I am feeling fine, and I went to the hospital, and sure enough, there was no one there. The, the camera was broken. They couldn't film me, and there was only one child in the classroom the rest were in isolation so they said do you want to reschedule you don't have to do this and you know i looked at this one child i said a child is a child i'll just go in so i told him do you want me to do a whole presentation for you or just read a book and he said no please read this book so he chose van gogh wow yeah and i read it to him and i said would you like to keep this book and he said yes I said, okay, I'm going to sign it to you. His name was Christopher. And he's like, no, 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 no. Please don't sign it to me. Please sign it to Maya, my sister. Wow. And I said, okay. He said, she's an artist. Get this. She's an artist. Her birthday is today, but I'm stuck here, and I couldn't get her a present. Wow, that's some story, Seema. So, that's a powerful story. Yeah. That's really amazing. And then I looked, and I said, honestly, you know, if this somebody speaking to me somebody spoke to me that day wow beautiful yeah. beautiful that's some that's some story wow thank you. i bet you have more than one but oh, I, don't, I, have many. I don't think i don't think right now you have a couple of hours yeah no, no 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 so moving on uh, i i meant to ask you what is your favorite museum oh that's a very hard one because i have a lot in new york it's the metropolitan museum of art because they have a lot to offer uh, different genres, and they even have a modern section. But I have to say, when I'm in Paris, it's at Dorsey. And it's only because I love the Impressionists, and the, and I love Impressionism, and my series are about the Impressionism, uh, the Impressionist artists. And so it, it, it would have to be the Dorsey. Wow. Yeah. You know, I listen to you speak, and, uh, you know, they're not going to feel this so much on my podcast of you, but in the future... Uh, uh, we will have TVs in here soon. The uh, the podcasted versions, we're about a month away, we'll be setting up cameras here. That's and they'll great. be incorporated into the studio. But uh, here on Facebook Live, I mean, your passion, your passion just rad radiates. Aww, it's really it's really special. Thank you. That it really, means it a really lot. Is. It's a tremendous quality that, you. Uh, that you have. It's Thank really you. special. So, um, you know, it's also my uh, understanding that uh, you are a songwriter and have a couple of released children's songs. Yes. Why don't you tell me and tell the audience okay. uh, all about this? It's actually really cool. They're all on YouTube. So if you Google my name on YouTube, a lot of my songs will pop up and videos. Um, and actually, it's family-oriented. What was the show back in the day? Partridge Family? The Partridge <laughs> the Family. The Partridge Family. <laughs> Seema says Patridge family. It's the <laughs> it's the Partridge family. Let's see if I can maybe I can get the Partridge, partridge. family. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Patridge family. 
I clearly I was too young. <laughs> <laughs> the Blackman family and the, the Patrick family. family yeah? And not the Levy family <laughs> all sing songs. <laughs> I want everybody to know, don't be afraid. We have a lot of fun here in Setauket on this studio. <laughs> and uh, I welcome anyone that's got an inspiring story, a career that they want to talk about, life experiences they want to talk about. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Yes. Be like Seema and come on. So I just wanted to say that, but go ahead. Yeah, no, so my son raps two of the songs. My daughter sings. Um, my oldest son Jordan's guitar teacher wrote the music and I wrote the songs um he wrote the music under my uh direction so we are a big Drake family shout out to Drake if you're watching <laughs> um so we need to rap songs we also love uh ballet my daughter is an incredible dancer um and so one of the songs about the gods called the God's ways um was um sung by my daughter and um and uh, her mu music teacher um another music dancer wrote the dance she and and it came out really beautifully and my friend's daughters were the dancers as well beautiful yeah beautiful. we have remy morgan drew amanda and paris beautiful. they were the dancers beautiful awesome yes. so listen uh are you able to sing 10 seconds of uh so everybody could hear your voice. Oh, so I'm definitely 10, am very talented, but singing is not one You won't of do that. Okay. okay. I, I, my voice is very deep and raspy. So how are, you, how are your teaching methods uh, different from any other teacher? Okay. So when I come into the class, I like visual. So all of the art will be portrayed throughout the classroom. So whether the kids are turning left, right, or back, they'll see the art of the artist. We then analyze a piece of art um, through games. So I like to play I find or I spy and let the kids answer. I don't like to speak so much unless I'm telling them about the history of the artist, of where he was born and what he liked to do and how he became an artist. I want the kids to to speak, to analyze art because art is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Um, and then we follow by listening to one of my songs. I read a book, and then we have a nice project to do. I just want to straighten this out. For Thank you. <laughs> and then we follow by a project. Super, super. Oh, and my books um, just recently added 10 pages to each book of Color Me In uh, Art by the Artist. So not only are you get a beautiful illustrated, by the way, illustrated by Justin Morcillo, Incredible, love them. I discovered them at Starbucks. Um, not only that, um, the back of the book after the story and all the illustration, you get the kids get to color a piece of art, wow. ten pieces of art, works by the artist. Beautiful. So listen, I know you do a lot of teaching, yes. and you also mm -hmm. do a tremendous amount of charitable work. Yeah. I know you've mentioned Cone's Medical Center. Yes. Why don't you get into a little bit more about Cone's Medical Center and what you, you know, your involvement? Sure. So um, I started a charity called Cheer for Children, and now it's run by by my best friends and I. We're a total of ten, and we're a great bunch. It was two, about a year and a half in the makings, but it finally came into fruition. It's in search for med, um, medical research, children's medical research. Uh, it's doing very well. We already had two events, and the charity is only five months old. Um, so I think the possibilities will be endless. And everyone, everyone, whether it's a vendor or a friend or a restaurant owner, always um, text messages me, um, and offers their goods to our charity. And I am very honored and humbled and very thankful to everybody. And so are the children. You know, I'm beautiful and I'm, I'm just listening to you uh, very carefully. And I've, uh, as I listen to you more and more for this first half hour, I've got to ask you who, uh, who inspired you? Who's your role model and why? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do have many role models, present 
and future. I mean, present and past. Wow. So the past, always my mom, but that's everyone, every daughter, most daughters, role models are moms. But Golda Meir was my uh, role model back in the days because she broke a lot of barriers for women and became the prime minister of Israel, first prime minister of Israel. We still don't have a female president, people, in America. But Israel had the first uh, prime minister, and she was a liberal, and she got it right. And she, her message was for the world to be united. Mm. And I love that. To me, I love that. And the reason I'm saying uh uh-oh is because I don't want people to misunderstand me because I'm not political right now. But Melania Trump is my current role model, and I have to tell you why. She is an immigrant just like me. She came to the country with a green card just like me, became a citizen just like me. And ladies and gentlemen, after just being a model, she's the first lady of the United States. Wow. If that's not a role model, I, hope, I don't know what I is. hope Ivanka is on listening. Uh, if she's not, uh, we're going to get her this because that was... Uh, that was pretty powerful, pretty special. Yes. I, know, I know you want to go on, but you know you also mentioned Golda Meir. I mean, that history to me. Yeah, she was just a remarkable, incredible remarkable. woman in history. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite. Yes, uh, really. And she was viewed as an equal, and she was able to be viewed as an equal because she demanded equal rights back in the days. And whether it's a man or woman, they all looked at her and listened and viewed, and actually followed as she said. And I would love to see more of that today. Right, right. You know, and in uh, our own no country. matter. And uh, once again, another one of your role models and someone you have tremendous respect for. No matter what, in these difficult and unprecedented uh, political times, with what's taken place over the last year, what continues to pull families and friends apart, the politics. Uh, I also agree with you. Uh, uh, no matter what you, uh, how you feel politically. You got to have a lot of respect for Ivanka Trump. Oh, She's a remarkable, uh, remarkable, a remarkable, a remarkable woman. Absolutely, I do. I have respect for women that do things. I have respect for men that do things. But Ivanka will set Donald straight. <laughs> He's she smooths things over for him, and hopefully, we're all going to be the United States of America and just make this country great again. Yeah. Well, didn't Melania once say in an interview that she did? She said she's basically babysitting two kids. Yeah. Right? That's yes. what uh, that's what she's doing. Yes. So is there anything else that you want to talk about, about your books, how they stand out, and just making sure that the everybody knows the names of your books, where your books can be purchased, uh, mm-hmm. how it works fitting in with school curriculum? I mean, basically, I know... Uh, that we need to soon bring the show to a close based on uh, the time frame we're under. Yes. But is there anything else that I haven't brought up here on the show uh, th- about the books, about the curriculum, where sure. uh, where your books can be purchased, um, how people can reach Seema Levy and Mother Art World? So it's okay. uh, it's all it's all so here it's for you now. Mother's Art World um, books can be purchased on Amazon. On my website, which is www.mothersartworld.com, um, Barnes and Nobles online, um, a lot of Gold Coast kids. <laughs> uh, if you're nearby, Cottage Pharmacy, Book Review, um, a lot of different places. Please, Mom, uh, Petite, um, Le Petite, many places. But then again, the world is huge. I speak four languages. I need to get this product out there even further. Um, my books are different because they're interactive. So you're learning real art history through imagination. And then you get to color pages in the back of the book. I also have a curriculum that I've written um, honoring two artists per month. And I would love to come to your school uh, as a guest um, educator. You can contact me on Facebook um, or on my website. And I my website is my um, Facebook is Mother's Art World or Seema Levy. And I would come and do an art presentation at your school. It'd be my pleasure. 
Seem, if I could ask, uh, when you when you invite schools like that that you just did, how long does a presentation take? So if I'm doing all the school at the auditorium, it's about an hour and a half. Um, no, an hour if it's the whole school. If I go into the classroom, it's up to the teacher, but I stay no longer than an hour and a half. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So in between everything that you do, you still find time uh, to uh, do a lot of charitable work. Yes. I believe that if you don't do any charity wor uh, works, um, then your soul is empty. Right. I do. Because... There are so many people in needs out there, whether it's financial or just like donating your time. It doesn't even have to be money. Go to a soup kitchen, go to Ronald McDonald's house, go to the hospital, UJA. Um, my family's being honored on April 4th for Hinini, and I have to plug her too. She's my Rebbe Slavi, Young Rise, and she's my also role model, I should mention her, because I learned that the blueprints of life is from our ancient biblical ways. And um, if you only just follow the little things, life could be beautiful and much easier because the world is tough today. Mm. Yeah, so I do I'll go out, go do some charity works. Well, before I close out the podcast version of our show, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, no, I mean, I feel like you covered so much. You're very easy to be interviewed with. Um, and I love your show. And I see it being even greater and greater. And I will be your guest anytime. It doesn't end after today. It's no. only it's only the beginning. Only the beginning. And as I as I said, besides in studio, you are welcome back anytime you want. Thank you. Okay. Thank and you. Uh, obviously, you know that there's a second show that I do called Dean on the Street, which yes. are much shorter version shows that I'm sure there's lots of great things all around your life that we could do some great <laughs> Dean on the Streets, even with some, even I with, think he wants to follow with, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe Dean on the Street, maybe Dean on the Street should come to that once a week friends oh. ladies luncheon right and do a dean on the street daniel there. diamond what do you think of that <laughs> <laughs> It'll be so fun. unless there's anything else that you want to uh, I, share that we haven't discussed i will everybody will see how i close out uh a a regular show here yeah no it was great thank you very much well listen i want to thank you very much for coming out to satorka and coming out to the dean blackman show I want to wish uh, the upcoming weeks a happy Pesach and a happy okay. Passover. Happy Passover. Uh, good health, success. Happy Easter. Um, be safe um, and uh, a lot of safety. We need Thank that. You. We need that in this world. And uh, let me tell you something. You're one of the most inspiring, educational, and uh, with a great sense of humor. Thank and you. Your, your family and everyone, the children, your friends, everybody in this world, in your universe, mm -hmm. is very fortunate that they know you. I'm gonna cry. They Thank you. They, they really That's are. That's very nice. So Thank on you. that note, you're gonna see how uh, how I close out the show, and what we'll do is we'll close out the podcast, and then we could still stay with people on Facebook Live if you'd like. Oh no. Okay, but from <laughs> it's up to you. But I just want to say from all uh, you know from all our listeners. I want to thank everybody for uh, being with us today. Thank you. Evan. And uh, once again, uh, Seema's show, as well as all previous shows, are all podcasted and archived on the Dean Blackman Show channel, uh, YouTube channel, as well as iTunes for downloading. And if anybody has any ideas, subjects, topics, if anybody would like to be a guest on my show, please email me at dean at deanbleckman.com. So from all of us here at the Dean Blackman Show, everybody have a great afternoon and a great Hi. evening. You've been listening to the Dean Blackman Show live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.